Hi everyone! So it's now day 11 of cycle 4 of my treatment and I'm really glad to say that I have finished all the chemotherapy now, completely done. Um, I had my last session on last Thursday and there's no more. So the last two cycles were just belt and braces just to make sure that all of the lymphoma, all the cancer cells have been eradicated for good. So that's all done now. Brilliant. So it's really exciting. Um, it's a relief. Um, you feel all sorts of different emotions really um, at this time. But I just wanted to share that with everybody. So the treatment's all done. Um, I've got um, 10 days left now of this cycle. Uh, so I'm still on medication, still taking steroids and, and antibiotics and antivirals and um, all that other kind of stuff. Still taking injections as well. Um, so they'll all finish on uh, about, I think it's the 15th of August, which is when I'll have my next appointment with Dr. Fox as well to discuss everything with him. So I still need to go back for checkups um, and I will be having a scan, uh, which I thought would be literally at the end of this cycle. So I thought I'd be having another PET scan, which was the plan. Um, but when we saw the doctor last, who was a stand-in doctor, um, he said that there's no need to actually do another PET scan because my last scan was so clean I am um, I was effectively already in remission then halfway through which is really good to hear so he says there's no point in doing another PET scan because we know it won't show anything because since then you've, you've had an extra two treatment um, cycles so what they're going to do instead is a CT scan on around about the 1st of October. So leave it a few months, just make sure uh, that everything is clean and clear. So that's the plan. So the, I guess the, um, the biggest consideration now is recovery and it's recovery from the chemotherapy because it really does knock you for six in lots of different ways, obviously. Your immune system, especially on the beer cup, um, is compromised and I knew that it would be. So each month um, I've been having blood tests when I go to clinic, but also requesting blood tests on day eight as well, just so I can see where my bloods are at. And on Thursday, which is my day eight for this cycle, my neutrophils were extremely low, which they have been before, they were on the first cycle. Um, which makes you neutropenic. Now, hopefully I'm not neutropenic today. Hopefully the, the jabs that I've been taking to increase my um, blood cells, my white blood cells, my neutrophils um, are working. Um, but it does make you feel quite, um, quite anxious at times because there's still that consideration that you need to be very careful um, you can't really go out and about, mix with friends, um, etc, etc. So I think that it's such a wonderful thing when you're told that you're better, that the cancer's gone, that you're in remission, that you, you've completed your treatment. All those things are just such wonderful milestones. And you kind of expect at this stage to think, right, all done, you know, yeah, I, can, I can move on, all done. But you do go through some kind of quite anxious thought processes, processes because you start to then consider, right, what effect has all of this had on my body? And you need to kind of find the balance of not rushing ahead, you know, not thinking, right, that's it now, I'm going to go and have a party, <laughs> all done, um, which I do want to do. Um, but you need to kind of hold yourself back a little bit and have patience. But at the same time, I think it is very important to keep a very positive mindset, obviously. There are lots of bits of information out there which will tell you it could take six months for the chemotherapy side effects to, to, to leave you. Now, in terms of kind of mild side effects, um, you know, like um, the effect on your digestion, um, you know, maybe effect on your on your skin and things like that aren't too bad. I think it's more the immune system side of things. It's you know, it, it can kind of feel quite um, complicated. So your hemoglobin um, levels are normally quite low after 
chemotherapy. Mine have been kind of progressively just kind of being knocked back. Now, they only give you a blood transfusion when you get to, I think it's the value is about um, 80, and I haven't gone below 90, which is good, um, but I'm still feeling it. So I'm borderline anemic, um, and that makes you feel out of puff. Um, it can make you feel quite faint. Yesterday, I noticed that um, the corner of my eyes were very white, my gums were white, everything just seemed very <laughs> pale um, and I felt very washed out. So, um, and that can have other effects as well um, on, on the rest of your body, having low haemoglobin. Um, in terms of um, white blood cells, and we all know that they're there to protect you, um, to keep you from, um, you know, obviously, fight infection etc etc especially the neutrophils so you you know I, I have trust and have faith that they will build up and um, I think that's the key it's it's believing that the only way is up now so I'm eating really well <laughs> I normally do anyway but I am really thinking about some kind of anti-inflammatory ingredients that I can use garlic um, onions, ginger, um, I'm eating lots of green veg, lots of vitamin C rich foods like um, red peppers, broccoli, oranges, um, also trying to bulk out at the same time because I've, you know, I have to kind of really eat so, so much to keep my weight up. So there's that consideration as well. So I'm focusing on, on that, but also been doing a lot of reflection. Um, and clearly when you're going through something like this, you do get a lot of time to reflect um, at home. So I'm building on the work um, that I've already done and building on my knowledge and um, ponderings um, that I already have going through my mind. Um, but the mind-body link is so important because when you start feeling anxious and you start imagining, you know, what if this, what if that, what if I catch something, then you're projecting that and it's not a good idea because what you want to manifest is health and well-being. So it's getting the balance between feeling the fear, feeling the anxiety, noticing it, letting it go. And believe me, there's been lots and lots of tears, very cathartic. Um, there's been moments where it just comes up unexpected and you just need to let let it go but then it's moving on from that and it's feeling you're in a strength again and you're kind of in a warrior and thinking no actually what I'm going to do is envisage a very healthy future for myself um, I'm going to help my body to recover by quietening my mind by strengthening um, my mind and believing believing that everything is going to go smoothly um, so it's a combination of patience, belief, um, and just kind of utilizing all the support as well that you have, remembering that although you're not seeing people, they're there supporting you and kind of absorbing all that love and all the flowers and, and everything else that people give to you. So it's important to receive that as well and ask for help whenever you need it. So I guess I just kind of wanted to talk about those things, seeing as though it's probably going to be one of my last videos on the vlog, um, which is a really wonderful thing. Um, but it's a bit like um, when you're at this point in the journey, it's a little bit like those films that you've seen where, you know, the, um, the poor long suffering characters have been pulled off the, you know, the, um, the island or from the chaos in a helicopter and it's the end of the film and you think, oh good, everyone's all right now. You know, you, you forget that kind of one of them's got a leg falling off and they've just been through something really awful, but you just think, well, it's okay because they're, they're out of the danger, they're out of the woods and now it's just a case of them recovering and that's true. Um, but then obviously there is that recovery um, to be had. So, um, it's still a psychological journey that you're still on um, and the finish line is, is very close now. Um, another kind of metaphor, I guess, is I feel that I'm now very close to dry land. <laughs> I've been on my little ship, all my sails are a bit ripped and a bit worse for wear, but I know that I'll be able to repair them. And um, I can see all the people cheering there and welcoming me back onto dry land. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the future. I'm feeling um, 
happy and optimistic and I will do one more video I think um, once I've had my appointment with Dr Fox for closure actually more than anything else and then I really look forward to focusing on doing my wellbeing videos um, I'm really putting my energy into those so you will see me on here again very very soon love to all of my family and friends but also to um, my new subscribers thank you very much for subscribing uh, to all those who are going through um, Hodgkin's lymphoma but also to all of those who are going through any tough time um, in their lives um, we all need to support each other and um, I wish you all well and send you all lots of love and um, thanks once again for your support. Bye for now.